thanks very much. And um, I got into my hotel room at midnight last night and realised, finally read the program, realised we only have 10 minutes. So I actually ditched half my slides. And uh, in there, of course, is anything relating to the company, more it's all about the project. So by way of background, Mod, two, just over two years ago, was a $3 million sort of burnt out West Perth Explorer. Uh, we got very, very lucky and acquired uh, um, a major holding in a, in a copper belt and we're in a unique situation now. We're, I think we're the only company uh, probably on the planet that dominates a, a, a copper belt in a friendly jurisdiction and it's a sediment hosted copper belt. They're rare and much sought after. Uh, here we are today, uh, market cap's gone from 3 million to north of 100 million. Um, we've got something like 23 million in the bank. We've got a major exploration campaign uh, underway and we have um, a very nice startup 10 year mine, um, which we completed a feasibility study for only uh, 22 months after the discovery. So uh, the story is going to focus on the project, not the people, but I just should say that the board management team, um, very solid, very strong team, very committed to this project. These are guys that have been involved in exploration, developing mines, financing mines, processing, exporting concentrates. So we're in pretty good shape and we're building that team uh, down the sort of mid-level management chain. Um, we're up in the northwest of uh, Botswana here, up against the Namibian border on the left-hand side. Um, the copper belt runs for about 350 kilometres uh, through Botswana and uh, disappears under deep sand into Namibia. Um, the sort of two components here, the eastern part in blue, that's all been consolidated by uh, American uh, a group of guys there called Cooper Canyon Capital, which is funded by GNRI out of London here. Um, they've consolidated probably around a 7 million uh, tonnes of copper and resources. There's seven major deposits in there, looking to develop a 100 million tonne, 2% underground mine called Zone 5. Um, 25 years of history in the blue zone, as we call it there. Um, and basically, all of the orange and red is, is dominated by MOD. The paler colour is uh, a joint venture we have with an aim-listed company here called Metal Tiger, so it's Mod 70, Metal Tiger 30. Um, and they paid, well, wrote the first check basically to get us into this really unique uh, project. The ground that we hold uh, is around about 200 kilometres in length. Uh, there are three uh, prospective copper um, zones, if you like, or corridors through that. We're clearly focused on the central structural corridor for many good reasons. And uh, that runs for 200 kilometres. It's around about anything from 20 to 50 kilometres wide. Uh, however, we have many other targets all delineated as T's. So we started out initially with T1 to T10. Um, found copper at T1, found copper at T2, skipped T3, drilled T4, found copper at T4. Then Jacques, who's sitting down here, got a bit wondered what had happened to T3, a very subtle copper soil anomaly, drilled the first hole, we ended up with 53 metres of 2% copper. Shares went up 10 bagger on day one, we've never looked back. So for two years since then, uh, we've put out various resources, we're up around the 36 million tonnes at over a percent copper and climbing. We're due another resource update uh, in early June this year, so we're very active, probably six rigs going there today. Uh, and we're now looking to find the next T3 or perhaps something even better. So I'll just roll with the story here. Uh, big year underway. This is a year really of transition for MOD. We're doing many things uh, to develop this uh, towards what we believe is a mid-cap asset opportunity. Uh, the company, we're looking to consolidate our long history of uh, paper, uh, 2.3 billion. Uh, if shareholders vote in two weeks' time to consolidate, that will become 230 million. Uh, we're marketing very strongly in London uh, and in Hong Kong, Singapore and in Australia. We're building a proper register of people who really get the story. And I guess uh, if we get people to cite, um, they see the core, they see the scale of what we're doing, uh, they get the pic big picture here. So uh, we have three resource projects, currently T3 Pit, um, expansion that we're considering uh, for a, a, to push it out from uh, nine years to 12 years. T3 underground, uh, which is uh, simply down dip. T, uh, T1 underground, again, we're targeting sort of 2% underground grades here, and three major exploration uh, areas. Um, the first mine, T3, as I say, we completed the uh, PFS. That was uh, end of January announced, a very robust project, um, and 
we are looking um, to uh, finalise a feasibility study. So we have a highly experienced team of guys taking us through to uh, end of March when we should wrap up. We'll then apply for a mining licence. We work very closely with to meet all in-country objectives here. We're um, setting new standards in Botswana in terms of uh, employment, in terms of local support, in terms of uh, technology and mining expertise that will come from Australia straight into Botswana. I should say we're an ASX listed company for that. Um, simple slide but a lot of work goes in there so probably a little bit too much information here but a base case pit two and a half million ton a year uh, and an expansion case up to four million tons. Uh, expansion currently in our models kicking in year three so it enables that opportunity to fund that from cash flow. It's a very uh, you know, big cash flow generator. This It's a very simple wonderful geometry, metallurgically it's perfect, uh, it's in the right place. So I, I just don't have time to dwell on that, I'll just have to say that's on our website. Um, the pit, uh, taking it down about 220 metres, the ore zone sort of anything up to 100 metres wide. Uh, we're looking at multiple stacked horizons here of sediment hosted copper uh, with a structural component to that. On the right hand side we see our uh, production profile over a 12-year life. The orange is the base case, takes us up around the 25,000 tonne a year copper. The blue is the expansion case and we've left a, an, a very obvious gap between 30,000 and 60,000 tonnes a year. That's what we're looking to fill. That's where we want to be if we're going to start joining the mid-cap club and we have a clear path towards that just on what we know. Um, just to give you a little idea, quickest way to show this deposit is around about a kilometre and a half long um, as this is a long section, we're just trying to demonstrate that this deposit sits on a dome. We're right on the top of a dome and domes feature very clearly in our expansion uh, of our exploration. We're currently spending around about 15 million uh, uh, in the next 12 months on drilling out many domes in this region. Uh, again, just showing the pit and the underground that we're now pursuing. The metallurgy, again, time challenges me here. so. Uh, we're looking at sort of well north of 90% recoveries. We have the full suite of copper minerals, very little oxide. This is all primary copper sulphides, boronite, chalcosite, chalcopyrite. And we're looking at really high quality, high grade concentrates, which would be uh, transported uh, through Namibia and exported from Walvis Bay. So clearly off take is a, uh, starting to uh, come and knock on our door. And we're very keen to talk to smelters directly because of uh, my history of dealing with Chinese smelters, I reckon it's a pretty interesting option. Uh, infrastructure, superb. Highway running down here. Uh, government committed to running power down this road uh, to support the copper belt, uh, which they have in effect given a stewardship to explore and develop. Uh, and uh, we uh, lay out of the, uh, of the uh, proposed um, operations. We're looking first production 2020. Um, we have a really unusual... Um, situation and in country we've created uh, a, a company Sakudu Metals, Rhino Metals. Uh, all the day-to-day -day activities are run by just a wonderful team of Botswana nationals here. Some of these guys have worked globally. Uh, this is just some of our exploration team here um, and uh, we almost use Australian and South African expertise in a consulting role into this group of people. So uh, this is a really a unique opportunity for us to really work with community, government objectives, uh, and, and try and um, deal with that in many ways. We're building a construction camp to an Australian standard currently for 400 people, simply not enough accommodation uh, capacity in the, in the uh, area w where we operate. Um, the scale, I just want to come back to that. I've only got a minute or less. Two areas, T3 dome and a black ellipse T20 dome. T3 dome, around about 1,000 square kilometres. T20 dome at 2,000 square kilometres. We think these domes are dome complexes. We've changed our thinking here. This is snapshot of electromagnetics of the T3 dome. Uh, we've identified and announced just this week that some highly sophisticated processing has identified multiple prospective domes within this area. Our T3 uh, open pit mine is shown on top of a large broad conductive dome of the host sediments uh, and then for example on the right hand side uh, eight kilometres to the west we see very similar uh, dome, all buried at about the same depth, starting 100 metres. This is another one here, 20 kilometres east. There are something like seven of these domes. We're very curious uh, what is below them, and we're drilling there right now. T3 
T20 dome on another scale again. Um, this is driven by soil anomalies that extend over 60 kilometres. Um, we're working through this very robustly to get drilling uh, as soon as we can. So it's a mix, if you like, of um, production driven by a very experienced team and uh, a massive exploration campaign which is firmly supported uh, by Botswana. Thanks very much. <laughs>